With uh, when when it comes to working with Kirk Cousins, you, your son, the quarterbacks coach, or Kevin, what just just overall a global view of working with Kirk, what he does well, and what do you need to help him work through? Well, th- you made a great point there. First off, it's our job to find out what he does best, and we got to make sure that's what we're doing. So, you know, you don't try to push something on a player. And Kirk obviously is extremely accurate player uh he's proven that throughout his career he plays really well on the move and play pass and those type of things so we're just kevin knows uh kurt uh, better than clint and i we're getting there with him because we spent a lot of time with him but between the three of us you know there's a lot of good information and minds to be there and help him but the bottom line is we got to make him comfortable and go do what he does best on game day well i mean you played the position you worked with steve young one and one super bowl super bowls head coach went to super i mean you know you know as much about the quarterback spot Honestly, as any as anybody we've had around here in quite some time. So I mean, you probably know better than anybody. You can have the nice arm. You can be smart. You can put in the time. But you have to have something inside of you when those proverbial bullets begin to fire that not everybody has, and and that's key, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's situational football in this business, whether two minutes or hanging on to a lead in the last four minutes and you're trusting your quarterback. But the bottom line is he's got to be able to handle situational football. You've got to trust him and stay aggressive. You can never get, you know, you have to find ways to be aggressive in this league and make some big plays. And when they're not there, you got to be patient. So uh, Kirk's got all them tools. And like I said, we continue each and every day to find those things that we think he does best and make sure that we're doing those well. Gary Kubiak, 9 to noon, four-time Super Bowl champion, seven Super Bowls uh, in total. Just just as a, an overall look, whether you won or you lost, how hard is it getting to the Super Bowl? Well, it's extremely hard. I mean, first off, you got to have a good team, and then you got to have a little luck along the way. I mean, uh, you know, there are a lot of close games in the National Football League, getting used to winning those games, making the plays that are the difference. Uh, there's an old saying that, you know, uh, the difference between winning seven games in this league and winning 12 is usually about four or five plays a year. Yeah. I mean, it's just that type of league. So you got to get your mindset and be ready to play in those games. Know that you can win three ways, offensively, defensively, special teams. And Zim does a great job of sending that message every day to the team. When, when you had Peyton Manning, what was his arm strength like? Well, Peyton was in his last year when yeah. I had him, so I got to coach him that last year. He was fine. He could still do it. He had some had a problem with his foot. He missed yeah. seven weeks, so we had to battle with uh, with Brock as our backup and, play, and start seven games for us. But that's the mark of a good team. You're going to have problems, and how you survive problems, and how you get to the end of the year, and and get your team in position to go be the best for one month. That that that's a I would say that's a kind of an art. You know, you got to figure that out and find out how to get there. Well, and certainly no guarantees for the Vikings and the offense and into 2019. No yardage, points, totals. Well, that that'll take, that'll play itself out. But what, whether it's Schaub and Arian Foster with you coaching in Houston, coordinating for John Harbaugh in Baltimore with Flacco and Justin Forsett, it just seems there's something with the way you and uh, and now Kevin are going to do it where it's had productivity, but not necessarily Hall of Fame type players. Well, well, is that accurate, and, and well, what I, makes it so good? I think that gets to believing in your system and what you're doing. You know, I mean, hey, we, we've all got to have good, great players to be successful, but you have to go out there and believe in something. You know, if, you, if you're going to be a physical football team, established a run, you know, you can't talk about those things. You've got to go do those things. So mm-hmm. our message is being sent every day exactly what we want to look like, and we've got the people that have the ability to go out there and make it look really good. But from a scheming standpoint, Gary, I mean, we can we can envision this, this slow rolling flow of the offensive line, stretch handoffs, quarterback rolls out, play action, somebody's wide open other side of the field. But that, that's not the only part, right? I mean, you can't run just one thing no, all the time. Absolutely. I mean, in, th- in this league, sometimes you show up on game day and people put eight, eight in the box and you better, you know, you may have to throw it 45 times. You know, other times maybe that's not the case. So, I mean, you got to do what, what you need to do that day to win. So, I mean, you have to have the confidence that you can do those things. So, you don't, you know, it's that old saying, there's, there's not just one way for my team to be successful. We can beat you a lot of ways. So that's a mentality, and I think Coach does a great job of sending that mentality to his football team every day. Now that you've worked with Adam Thielen basically on a daily basis from OTAs, I mean, that close to him, what do you think of him? He's special. I mean, uh, first off, every, every great player I've ever been around, great receiver, been around Jerry Rice, Rod Smith, some of these, and Andre Johnson, they're all workers. I mean, y'all watch him. I mean, the kid comes out here and from the minute he steps on the field until he goes in, he's 100 miles an hour. 
they all want to be coached no matter how long they play. They want to know, hey, how can I get better? And that's what he is. And, you know, having Diggs on the other side makes us balance. A lot of teams aren't balanced from that standpoint. So that enables us to hopefully keep people from rolling this way a lot and keep us uh, even keeled in what we're doing. So so when the, the preferred five are playing on the offensive line, inside you've used, you and Kevin have used, elf line to left guard, Brad Berry at center, new guy Klein at right guard. Now you have second-year guy O'Neal at right tackle. I know he's nicked up now. So with, with it, if the perception is you're a little smallish inside mm-hmm. and you got a bully ball straight forward to get a few yards, do you and Kevin feel that's something the offense can do? Yes, I do. And, you know, the thing that's going to help us do that if we can get people to run. You know, when you run zone schemes, you're stretching the field. You're, you know, working toward the sidelines, trying to get people to displace. So that's got to help you when it's time to go downhill on fourth and one and find a way to make it work. But it's a very unselfish group. We asked, you know, to be honest with you, you got to give Pat a lot of credit. We said, hey, Pat, we're going to move you. And uh, we got this young center coming here. We want you to buy into that. And it didn't take long because Garrett's such a very mature young kid. So uh, they're all in place. We need to keep them all healthy, uh, get through this training camp with them all healthy, but we're heading in the right direction. Last one, uh, Green Bay's new head coach, Matt LaFleur. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he was your offensive quality control guy yeah. in Houston, 08 yeah. and 09. Uh, what, what do you remember about Matt? Well, he's a smart young man. I had him and Kyle Shanahan on the same staff when I was wow. there in Houston, but time flies. It makes me feel old, but uh, Matt, Matt's a good young football coach. Obviously, that's a big job in Green Bay, and We'll see him a couple times this year, but uh, he's a fine young football coach. What a tremendous opportunity at a young age. Well, you want to see him succeed because you know him and you're fond of him, but you obviously Hope, don't yeah. want to see Green Bay win a million there games. You go. Hopefully at least not twice a year. You <laughs> but, know? If, but if anybody knows <laughs> about starting as a head coach, it would be you. Yeah. So, like how difficult is that as a first-year head coach running the whole thing? Well, I, you know, I'll go back to the old saying, you, you you can't. You think you're ready to be a head coach, but until you get thrown in a fire, you just have no idea what it entails. You know, I mean, there's just so many more things for you to worry about. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sitting here watching a great one right here. You know, I, for me as a head coach, when I had a stop in Baltimore watching John work and sitting in the back of the room again, that was a big plus for me. And for me to come in here and watch Zim run his football team every day makes me a better uh, football coach every day. Great having you on, on the buddy. show. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Gary Kubiak. Tom West, thank you very much.